This mega prison in El Salvador can hold up to 40,000 inmates, but the conditions are far from comfortable. Each cell only has 80 metal bunks for 100 prisoners, forcing 20 people to fight for a spot on the cold, hard floor. Why did a high-tech mega prison choose to have such limited space? It's because this is not just a tale of incarceration, but a brutal story of corruption, violence, and an attempt to contain a problem that has plagued the nation for decades. The Terrorism Confinement Center Get ready to dive into the shocking reality of life in this overcrowded and understaffed prison. As soon as you enter the new mega prison, you'll be subjected to strict security measures, including visual and electronic scans, and zero communication with the outside world. With a 166 hectare area, an electrified wired fence, and an 11 meter high concrete wall, the prison is guarded by 600 soldiers and 250 police officers, as well as a network of dozens of cameras. The cells are overcrowded, with only 80 metal bunks for every 100 inmates, no mattresses, pads, or blankets allowed. The new maximum security prison is focused on punishment over rehabilitation, according to the Deputy Justice Minister. Inmates are only allowed to leave their cells for court appearances or punishment in solitary confinement. Guards carry pistols and assault rifles and can use deadly force as they see fit. Despite having dining halls, exercise rooms, and ping pong tables, they are exclusively for the guards. Hold on tight as we delve deeper into the dark reality of life inside El Salvador's prison system. Despite President Bukele's claims that the new mega prison will aid in the fight against gang violence, the truth is far from that. With the highest incarceration rate in the world and prisons operating at over double capacity, life inside is a constant battle for survival. And things took a turn for the worse in March of last year, when El Salvador saw the most violent 24-hour period since the end of the Civil War in 1992, with a death toll of 62. By the end of the week, that number had risen to 87 leaving the nation reeling from the extreme violence. Are these brutal conditions really the solution to the gang problem, or is there a better way? Is the new mega prison in El Salvador really the answer to the gang violence problem? With the highest incarceration rate in the world and prisons operating at over double capacity, life inside is a constant battle for survival. The government's anti-gang measures have resulted in the arrest of over 63,000 suspected gang members, but the crackdown has also led to controversial methods of detention and inhumane conditions and mistreatment of inmates. Human rights organizations have raised concerns about the lack of basic human rights afforded to prisoners. With the recent spike in violence and the prison system already in shambles, is there a better solution to this problem? Imagine being locked up in a prison with 350 other inmates, all sharing a clogged bathroom and struggling to even get food. According to a recent report, prisoners in El Salvador have no receptacles to receive food and are given plastic bottles or pieces of plastic bags to catch their food. Some even have to resort to eating with their bare hands, while others spill their food everywhere. And that's not even the worst part. Things have only gotten worse since the state of exception began. Human rights organizations have tallied over 80 custody deaths of people arrested during the crackdown, including men, women, young, and old. What's even more alarming is the cause of the death is always blamed on natural causes, and there are no investigations or autopsies. But when families retrieve the bodies of their beloved ones, they're often battered black and blue. How can that be natural? Despite the extreme measures taken by President Bukele, the people of El Salvador are rallying behind him in the fight against gang violence. They've endured decades of violence and are tired of the gang's extortion tactics. Unlike those in Mexico and Colombia, Salvadoran gangs aren't key players in the drug trade, so they resort to shaking down everyone they can, including pregnant women and struggling families. It's a desperate situation, but the people of El Salvador see the iron fist policy as working, with homicide rates folly. But at what cost? Is it worth sacrificing human rights for the sake of safety? And what about those who are innocent but caught up in the violence? It's a complex issue with no easy answers, but one thing is clear. Something needs to change. The government crackdown on gangs in El Salvador has brought a new chapter in the country's long history of crime and violence. But is the new mega prison a solution or a ticking time bomb? 
While some applaud the government's efforts, the potential implications of mass incarceration and conditions in the prisons raise concern about human rights violations. Will this approach effectively address the issue of gang violence or simply make things worse? And that's a wrap. Justice remains a distant dream for many in El Salvador's prisons, and the punishment doesn't always fit the crime. Only time will tell. What do you think of this deceit in the shadows of El Salvador? Let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, for more crime content, make sure to hit subscribe and leave a like.